Thank you very much, panel. Let's now hear from our first witness, Dr. Tom Regan, Emeritus Professor of Philosophy at North Carolina University. His book, The Case for Animal Rights, published in 1983, is regarded by many scholars and commentators as the seminal work in this field. Dr. Regan joins us on the line from his university. Good evening, or rather good afternoon, Dr. Regan. Hello there. Uh, there are obvious differences between humans and animals, so what makes them equal? Well, I, I think if we begin with the notion of equality, it's obviously a difficult question. Um, it's uh, If we just think about human beings first and then think about uh, the animals, in the case of uh, uh, humans, it's not our intelligence because obviously some are much more intelligent than the rest of us or our artistic or, or athletic abilities. Um, nor that we just happen to belong to the same species, the species Homo sapiens, because the mere fact that of biological sameness or similarity carries no moral freight with it. What makes us equal, it seems to me, is something uh, in a way far simpler than that, and that is that we are, each of us in the world, aware of the world, aware of what happens to us, and what happens to us matters to us, uh, regardless of our intelligence or our athletic or artistic uh, assets. In this respect, we are all the same. We are all equally subjects of a life, as I use the expression. Melanie and Phillips, that is you, the ground of our equality. Melanie Phillips, do you find that convincing? Um, well, I have some questions that arise from that very interesting uh, statement. Um, can I just ask you, Dr. Reagan, first of all, uh, is it your case that animals have rights? Uh, yes, uh, it, just as it is first and foremost my case that you and I do. Right. Uh, is it not the case, though, that rights accrue to a moral community? And th in that case, do you believe that animals themselves form such a moral community? Rights can be understood by uh, uh, members of a moral community, that is to say, uh, people who have uh, the competence to understand, just as genes can be understood by members of a scientific community. But as as you well know, just because only members of the scientific community can understand genes, it doesn't follow that other beings lack genes. So just because those members of a moral community can understand rights, it does not follow that those who are not members of that community lack rights. Well, but isn't the whole concept of rights dependent on a moral community, which in itself is dependent on the notion of obligation? And the notion of obligation is based absolutely on conscious rationality, choices, and duty to others. And of course, animals don't have that, do they? Well, I never said that, but it seems to me that I heard every one of the people in, in the uh, on the program acknowledge that we have duties to animals, we have obligations to animals. So, Sorry, you, you, you misunderstood require... me. You misunderstood no. me. We, we have duties to animals. That's very much my belief. What I'm suggesting yes. to you is that animals can't have rights because animals don't have duties. And since animals don't have duties and don't have a sense of self-conscious obligation to other uh, animals and other species, it's a absurd to say they have rights. A newborn child has no duties. Does a newborn child lack rights? A newborn child is part of the human race, and the human race is part of a moral community. That's why a newborn child, just like somebody who is not sent into the other end of life, surely has a claim to being part of a moral community. Are you suggesting no. that a newborn child or somebody at the other end of life is the same as an animal? No. What I'm saying is that they are, are, are entitled to the same respectful treatment. It's not a question of are they the same in, in the sense of are they ca or are they potentially capable of different things? Do they have the same relationships with you and I? It's a question, are they fundamentally the same of being in the world, aware of the world, aware of what happens to them well, and what happens to them matters to them, excuse me, yeah. if I may finish, yeah. and, and that, uh, that that is the basis of rights. The notion of a moral community only defines those who have obligations to others. Yes. And we are members of a moral community, that's true. Uh, but the, we don't answer the question, to whom do we have obligations by, by uh, giving that fact that yeah. we belong to a moral community. Yeah. You say that animals are aware of themselves in the world, by which, of course, you mean that they feel pain, they act in their own interest, and so on. But if they are as aware of themselves in the world as humans are, since animals kill each other, is it right, therefore, for humans to kill each other? No, if there is moral no, equivalence. No, there is moral equivalence in the sense of, in the, in the issue of status. What is the status of a human being compared to the animals we've been talking about, the animals who are turned into food, turned into clothes, turned into tools, for example? But it doesn't follow that there's, that there's equality across the board. It does, that's, not, that's not what I've said. Uh, can I bring in Claire Fox now? Your questions for Professor Reagan. Professor Reagan, 
exploring the notion of awareness, we're usually aware of awareness through the public process of externalizing thoughts, that is through the development of language. That's lacking in the animal kingdom. Is it not? Well, so far, you know, so far as we know, they don't have a language uh, comparable to human language. I, I, I concede that point. But at the same time, what I, I think there are people who know a lot more about uh, animal behavior than I do. I'm trained as a philosopher. So when I want, am interested in animal behavior, I go to the experts. And what they tell me is that, uh, from Darwin down, that they tell me that animals are are capable of acting intentionally. That is, they're capable of initiating an but action we can't... now with, excuse me, with the intention of fulfilling that plan, that interest in the future. Right. I, I, want, I, have to, I have to just uh, interrupt you there because the truth of the matter is, is that you've now answered my question by saying that there's no communication between us and the animal kingdom, so we cannot actually know of their awareness. This is entirely based, is it, not on some kind of physiological understanding rather than any sense of uh, societal change, the u- things which we know humans have done in terms of progress. Animals no matter how advanced they are intellectually, have actually remain animals. Nothing has ever changed. Human society has changed, and we know that, and we can discuss it and debate it rationally because we have language. And what follows from that? What follows from that is that we are obviously a completely different species, incomparable, and capable of therefore saying that we're exceptional. Uh, I, I understand that, I mean, and it is my position that we, that we have uh, uh, a unique position in the world, and that is we have obligations to other animals that they don't have to us. We have obligations to one another that animals don't have to one another. So the idea that we are somehow different, you'll find no, you'll find no argument on my behalf. Right. Professor, Professor, Longley. Professor can, I, can I tease out a little bit what you mean when you use the word rights in connection with animals? Is, would you say the fundamental right was the right to life? The, the, the rights, the fundamental rights are rights to bodily integrity, to freedom, and the rights to life. The right to mm-hmm. life. And, now, and, 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 the, and, and the protection is significant. Okay, can I put a case to you then? If you're driving your car along at night and you um, mm-hmm. run over a wild animal and you get out and you find that, sadly and unfortunately, it's in pain and fatally injured, would you feel you would put it out of its misery? Would that be your response? If, if it was fatally injured, yes. if it was uh, uh, soon to die, that would be a merciful thing to do. Well, supposing you had knocked down if a human being... If it was soon being, to die... Supposing you had knocked yeah. down a human being, and they also were lying seriously injured by the roadside, are you aware that if you were to put them out of their misery, you would in fact be guilty of murder? Well, that would be uh, 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 display an inconsistency in our law, from oh, my point of view. But you would think the law should be the same in each case? That That's the right. killing if of a human a merciful... being should be the same as the killing of an animal? Not in all circumstances, Mr. Longley, but in the present, in the in the uh, bizarre case that you gave, yeah, that if it's a merciful thing to do, uh, if the person is protesting and saying, "Don't kill me," uh, that's not part of your scenario. Okay, I'm I understand what you're saying. Yeah. Melanie Phillips, last question to Dr. Reagan. Uh, you said earlier uh, that uh, uh, animals had the right to freedom. Uh, should pets be banned in that case? I think that's a difficult question. I mean, uh, I think that uh, companion animals are in some some uh, Ways, uh, uh, you know, wandering between two worlds. They don't really quite belong in the small apartments in which many of them live. And at the same time, a, a chihuahua is not ready to be re- reintroduced to the wild. So there's a there's a very difficult question there. Well, it's Look, not I would want to say, aren't, excuse aren't me, you excuse, avoiding you know, the, the issue? Me, ex- no, excuse me. What I'd want to say is this. If, if the idea, expectation is that uh, animal rights advocates must know all the answers to all the questions, no, we don't. Some, there, there are lots of things we don't know. There are lots of difficult questions that divide people of goodwill. But the fundamental question is, is, is or, or not what do we do about cases like this, but do we have the right to take animals, take their lives, invade their body, uh, and deprive them of their liberty in pursuit, in a systematic way, in a systematic way, not for their good, but for our good. Do we have that right, or are we violating their rights? Animal rights advocates in Great Britain, animal rights advocates in America, animal rights advocates across the world think that we don't have that right, and we violate their rights when we do that. Dr. Reagan, thank you very much for joining us.